There's been such a remarkable shift in public attitudes toward the legalization of marijuana in the past 10, 15 years. This Gallup poll now shows approval at about 64% nationwide. So earlier I asked Gupta how much he attributes journalism, media coverage of this topic to the shift in opinion. I think what journalism has provided is um, the facts and the data and, and the truth around this, because that, that was very hard to find. You had a lot of loud voices talking about the harms of, of cannabis, even at the federal level in terms of the research they funded, and not as many voices talking about the medicinal benefits. You heard some of that in other countries and mm -hmm. non-federally funded labs, but you didn't hear it uh, much elsewhere. So I think journalism helped fill that, fill that gap. And your view started to change when? My view started to change about five years ago. Uh, previously, I had done a fair amount of writing on this topic. I wrote a, uh, a story for Time Magazine uh, in back about nine years ago that basically said, I'm not that impressed with medicinal marijuana. I've looked at the data, and I don't find it particularly compelling. About five years ago, I realized something I think very important that I think has a parallel to media uh, as well, Brian, and that is that when I looked at the macro view of medicinal marijuana in this country, and I started looking at all the scientific literature, which is where I start, 94% uh, we calculated, 94% of the studies were designed to find harm. Mm. What is the risk of addiction? What is the risk of cancer? What are the, the side effects? And only about 6% were designed to find any benefit. So if you're looking at that from a macro level, you'd say, well, there's, there's nothing here. This mm. is mainly problematic. And I realized that was a problem upstream. Studies designed to find benefit were not getting funded. Researchers could not conduct those studies. It was preordained as a substance that has no medicinal value. That's when I started to say, well, what's going on here? Looking at patients, going to other countries, looking at these other labs, that's when it started to change. That reminds me of a problem throughout journalism, you know, these kinds of studies or surveys or, or kinds of research that's actually done by somebody with an agenda. That's right. So you wrote in your letter to Sessions, you said, I changed my mind and I am certain you can as well. Is this letter, is this a step toward advocacy journalism for you? I, I don't think so. I think it's a really fair question, but I think that actually getting the data behind uh, in one place and, and, and being able to present it in, in a scientifically based way full of truth and facts is actually really hard to do. It was hard for me to do. So I said, you know what, I spent five years doing this. Let me assimilate what we've learned in, in as easy to read a fashion as possible, you know, to the extent that you and I are communicators and we can communicate this in a, in a way that people understand. That's, that's, that's something that I think is helpful here. Cannabis can help treat pain. That is a consensus by the National Academy of Science. That is not a, a, an opinion. It can treat pain. It can treat the withdrawal when people are trying to come off of opioids. That, that is not a, a, an opinion, again. That is, that is a fact. It can help heal an addict's brain so they don't continue to relapse. That's scientific data that's going on right now at Mount Sinai Hospital. The research is happening there. These are facts, and I think it's important for someone like the Attorney General and other people within the administration to know this.